All right. Here we are. Coach's Roundtable episode, uh, I don't know, like 17, 18, 17? Ooh, that was a pretty good guess. Uh, we're talking today about why should you get strong or stronger, depending on where you're starting at, I guess. We could all get stronger. And uh, we're going to dive right into this. We were talking right before we started that we could honestly, me, if you just left me up here by myself, I could talk about this for probably four hours and be super into it the whole time. I, I would definitely lose the audience. Um, and you could also get really technical and like scientific talking about um, strength, how to get stronger, why we should get stronger, all the different benefits and stuff like that. We are gonna try to keep it simple and get through as many different benefits and the hows and the whys as possible when we are talking about strength or getting stronger. So I think the best place to start with this because I think that there are different definitions depending on who you ask of what strong even means. So Jeb, how would you define strong? Oh, wow. <laughs> It's a good question. Um, so I guess in the simplest terms, if we're just talking about physical strength, it's the ability to move yourself or to move an object some distance. And the further distance you can move it or the bigger or heavier the object or the more you can support yourself, the stronger you are. Yeah, and I think you can even like talk about distance could be pushing a sled or carrying something or even distance from the top of your back squat to the bottom and back up or from the ground to the top of your deadlift and then back down. So different ways of uh, measuring distance as well. Do any of you guys have a different definition for how you would define strength? I think too, like to even simplify it, it's just the ability to um, do work in a lot of ways. And there, there are other components to that depending on what the task is, but just the ability to, to move stuff, to, the ability to move stuff. That sounds pretty as simple as you can make it. Now, I think that there's also some confusion that we can maybe clarify before we get into the whys and the hows of the difference between strength and just straight up muscle like how much muscle you have on your body versus how strong you are. Because I think a lot of times when we say why you should want to get stronger or why you should strength train, people immediately go to, oh, I sh are they saying that I need to gain a bunch of muscle? And that's not necessarily what we're saying at all, actually, depending on how much muscle you have. Um, there is a difference between gaining strength and gaining muscle in, some, in a lot of ways. So Alex... Can you explain a little bit the difference between strength and just muscle that you have on your body? Uh, yeah, so as far as I understand it, um, if I can, rec with the muscle that I have, if I can recruit more of the like actual muscle cells than someone who even had more muscle cells to begin with, then I could potentially be stronger than someone who even has more muscle mass than I do. Um, and yeah, so gaining muscle doesn't necessarily equate to being stronger because I'm not able to recruit as much of that potential that the muscle cell has as someone who maybe spends more time under tension um, than I do or even works on the skill component of a lot of strength lifts, especially, you know, the Olympic lifts like cleans or snatches. There's a, a neurological component there that if I practice it enough or more than someone who has more muscle mass than me, then I could, in theory, be stronger than them. And yeah. Yeah. So there's a, there's definitely like a neurologic component to a lot of strength gains that I think is lost if you're just thinking about seeing the weight on the scale go up and gaining muscle, um, depending on the like complexity of the movement, which honestly, like a back squat, once it starts to get pretty heavy, it's pretty complex. Like your body is working as one whole unit and your body has to really learn how to recruit the right muscles at the right time. It also has to learn how to recruit more muscle fibers and uh, just having a lot of muscles 
it, it gives you a lot of potential to be really good at that. There's a lot of potential for you to be strong in movements that are more complex, but they still need to be practiced and your body still needs to learn how to perform them. And there's also like a mobility component to it where the better position you are and this whole thing. So we want to make sure that what you guys are hearing when we're talking today is not just gaining muscle mass, but gaining strength because there is value in both of those uh, efforts, but they're not exactly the same thing. The one joke that I used to give at the seminars all the time was um, having a lot of muscle mass is basically contractile potential. That's how much potential you have to be strong. And it you can kind of be like a display model only where you gained a bunch of muscle doing isolation type movements. And there's nothing wrong with that. And there's value in that as well. But that doesn't mean like Alex was saying that it's going to transfer into you being able to do functional stuff as so something as simple as like your own yard work and stuff like that. And I've known people with a lot of muscle from like bodybuilding type training who don't have a lot of functional capacity to use it. Um, well, we, yeah. had, we had a conversation about that the other day about how bodybuilders are a perfect example of this uh, strong and muscle gain, right? Um, not all bodybuilders are necessarily strong. They're strong in certain things. They're strong in whatever they movements they did to gain their muscle and, and a lot of times that's the bicep curls and the tricep extensions probably some bench press and stuff like that but a lot of machines they're probably going to jump on those machines and be able to max them out and be really impressive um, but what their body's not ready for is working as one full unit so th that'll come into play with some of the benefits that we talk about where the movements that you're choosing are going to have a greater impact on some of those than than just gaining muscle and before, again, we, before we get into the list, the very first thing that I wanted to mention was I think a lot of times men are all about this conversation in general. They're like, oh, yeah, the, I want to be stronger. I want to be bigger. I want to be, I mean, from the time they're teenage boys, a lot of men are really into this where women even still, and I think it's getting better, but a lot of women struggle with this. Like, oh, I don't want to be too big. I don't want to be too bulky. Like I just want long and lean muscles. And so they tend to shy away from anything that might make them stronger or where they're concerned where they're going to gain a lot of muscle. We want to be careful about that. The number one benefit and the number one reason for me why someone would want to work to get stronger is to prevent the natural muscle loss that happens as we age. So I was like nerding out last night. I was like reading studies and stuff like that. And one of the studies that I read on PubMed, I can't remember who did the study, but it was for every decade of life starting in our 20s, we lose between 3% and 8% of our lean body mass or our muscle mass as we age. And I think um, for men, it's probably the more on the lower end and women, it's on the higher end and happens a lot faster. And we start with less typically. And the problem with that is, is that um, it's gonna start to affect our quality of life, like our ability just to, I mean, Knox is almost 40 pounds now and I'm still carrying him around. So even just being able to be a powerful mom or, you know, carrying your suitcases through the, the um, airport or things like that, like daily life tasks. It's not just about what you can do in the gym, but also we start to look at um, some of the other things that we're going to list as problems that can come if we don't have a lot of muscle or coordination or some of these other mobility and some of these other things as we age. So we want to combat that completely. So Jeb, what would be your number one reason why you should get stronger? So I know we have a list over here with a lot of things that we'll probably get into, but looking at that list, I see a common thread between a lot of them. And um, so if I was to say like one thing, it would really be having to do with hormones, like the hormone regulation that you get from strength training. And what that does is it ends up improving things like your sleep, your mood, your um, metabolism, your ability to focus. Um, so at one point in my life, it was like, I wanted to be strong for the sake of being strong. And um, I have a story that maybe I'll tell later if it applies. But, but now it's like, yeah, that's cool. Like being strong, being able to lift heavy stuff. I, I, I do enjoy that. You want it to be Instagram strong. <laughs> no. 
Yeah, you know, I want to be able to like post myself on Instagram moving giant weights and have them be real and not fake. Um, but now what I really love about consistent uh, strength training is how it makes me feel in the rest of my life. Um, and it improves everything from like, you know, to my personal relationships and my, my ability to be patient and things like that. So, uh, and that all comes down to the hormone regulation, in my opinion. Yeah, and there's actually a lot of um, information. It's been it's been pretty heavily documented that, and I'll kind of skip down the list because I think this applies, um, that strength, exercise in general, but strength training has a big impact on mental health. Um, it's been shown to uh, decrease depression, anxiety, and I would say especially in women, for sure in men too, but especially in women, it's been documented to really improve self-esteem. And I think that comes with, again, like as a mom, when I don't have to like double, like think too hard about like, can I carry both of my kids at the same time? Like, no, I just do it. I don't even have to think about it. And I feel powerful. I feel independent through having that, at least that amount of strength to be able to just do daily tasks like that. Uh, Jules, what would be your number one reason, like for you as a person, why you want to maintain, I mean, you're pretty strong, but why you would want to maintain your strength or get stronger? Yeah, at this point, maintaining for sure is um, my goal. Um, Other than to beat Salvi. Yeah. Well, I just know, given that we have two boys and they're going to be, our lifestyle is very active and in the gym and naturally um you would expect that they kind of want to jump on board and i think those are going to be really good bonding moments with our with the boys um and i grew up around athletics my whole life so just being able to not worry about injury things like that um is very important to me to know that whatever we get thrown our way um from you know whatever stage in their life they are in that it's just a cool let's go do it let's go have fun and obviously being a protector for the family as well, um, having physical strength is a huge confidence boost and body awareness, you know, as a protector of the family as well. So, yeah, that that to me is a, a reason enough uh, to just stay strong uh, for, for throughout this lifetime. What about you, Alex? Um, for I mean, yeah, there's just there's a lot of things that I could talk about, but. I think the thing that really kicked it off for me was realizing how empowered I felt uh, when when I thought maybe I couldn't lift something and then I did or just watched myself progress into lifting loads that I couldn't before, um, especially as a woman, I think, and, and as maybe a stubborn wanting to be independent woman, um, just knowing that I can take care of myself um you know I take pride when people at the grocery store are like oh do you uh do you need me to carry that bag of dog food I'm like no I got it thanks though um and I was also just thinking about so my my dad is a paraplegic he's been in a wheelchair since he was 15 so all of my life and uh, I just I think about like my mom doing street parking and taking care of herself and being able to like knowing that if she needed to, she could lift him from the floor and get him back into his wheelchair or even myself. I don't you know, obviously I don't live with my parents anymore, um, but there are very real life applications to being strong and powerful and capable. Um, and although that's not part of my immediate life now. That's not to say it won't ever be again um, and that I won't be prepared for it if that came to pass. Yeah, the back, the uh, the strong independent woman thing can backfire sometimes because I got to tell you, sometimes I just don't want Julian to ask me to help him move the furniture. And I just want to <laughs> tell him to be like a normal husband and call one of your friends to come over instead of me helping you carry this up the stairs. Um, but unfortunately, he knows I'm capable. So here we are. Uh, you know, and one of, both of you guys kind of mentioned this, but I want to go back to what Julian was talking about because something that I had put on the list, actually two things are going to kind of apply to another reason that strength is so important for me is how it can prevent injury. 
And I would say especially functional strength. And what I mean by that is um, strength in movements like the deadlift, the squat, the clean movements that are you're going to see more in real life as opposed to maybe isolation type strength. Um, and the resilience that can come with it as well. So actually, in a couple of weeks, we're going to come on my nine year anniversary of my car accident where I was in a car accident. Um, most of you have probably heard this story before, but I was T-boned by a, a car and was had to be um, taken on a spine board in an ambulance to the hospital. And I had um, a complex C2 fracture. My C2 was fractured in two places. Um, long story short, they did not x-ray me that day. And for 17 days, I walked around with what's called a hangman's fracture that would have, uh, I've been told by doctors, if I didn't have as much muscle, um, probably paralyzed me in the car accident. And then for 17 days, I walked around with this like potential if I tripped or sneezed wrong or somebody bumped me in the elevator, um, still could have uh, paralyzed me. And I got away with it, I guess is the way that you can say it, because I had so much muscle in my neck that it protected me in the accident and it protected me for those 17 days and was there and available for me as I was healing to help me to heal in a way that I'm living my life the way that I am now. And it's just a story. Um, so having muscle mass and having that especially functional strength can prevent injury. It can build resilience. And one of the number one uh, issues that comes with age is in our older population is if they fall Oftentimes that's what ends up sending people to live in these assisted living facilities. Oftentimes it's not, you know, some, some medical care that they need because of a disease or anything like that, that they have. It's just literally they've lost the ability to carry their groceries, tie their shoes, get in and out of a chair and all of that stuff. And a lot of that can be prevented by maintaining as much strength as possible through our life. So those are huge, very, very important ones. Uh, I think that we've talked about for sure some of the more important reasons for wanting to be stronger, but I think what might help a little bit is some vanity reasons because, you know, at the end of the day, I've been reading some articles lately about how people have a hard time latching on to health goals that are in the distant in the distance and people have an easier time with okay, but how's it going to make me look? Or how's it going to, you know, wh how are my clothes going to fit or things like that? And that's why people tend to latch onto these aesthetic goals because they seem closer. They seem more uh, attainable soon. And so while I know that everyone listening probably cares about how they're going to feel when they're 80 and hopes to prevent some injury that may or may not happen, let's talk about how strength and muscle uh, plays out and how it helps us maybe look look better or, bur or burn more fat. Jeb, you want to talk about that? Sure. Yeah. I know we're trying to keep it pretty high level, um, but to put it hopefully pretty simply, if you are getting stronger, then you are going to maybe have a little bit more muscle. I, I don't want anyone to think that like, oh, if I start strength training, I'm going to get all bulky because some of us don't want to get bulky. Um, but it does a lot for regulating your metabolism, which is obviously hugely essential for, um, aesthetics, right? So I think that's kind of, um, the big thing. And then obviously, you know, if you, if you look at like the world's strongest man competitions, right? Like those guys don't have the greatest aesthetics because they are outliers right they're lifting as as much as they possibly can and eating as much as they possibly can so that they can just lift more and more and more and more and so that's not exactly what we're saying but if you have a, a smart program of progressive overload where you're just applying the right amount of dose of resistance and consistently increasing that resistance you're going to gain enough muscle to where that muscle basically allows you to burn more fat and use the food that you're taking in more efficiently. Yeah, I think in the most basic terms, 
the more muscle that you have on your body, the more calories your body's going to burn, even when you're asleep, when you're sitting at your desk, when you're working, um, potentially even in your workouts. So whether you want to gain a little bit to increase how much fat and calories your, your body is burning, even at rest, or even if you're just like, you know, I don't really want to gain a lot of muscle. You still need to work to maintain what you have because it's, it is kind of a use it or lose it situation where your body is not going to hold on to muscle that you're not using, especially after, again, like for women, it's closer to the age of 20 for guys. It's a little bit older where maybe you naturally have the genetics to have more muscle mass and you never really had to do a lot for it. Eventually your body's going to be like, well, this is, I don't need this. It's he or she is not using it. So, um, you're going to start to lose it. And then for women, for example, when you start to lose it, well, I guess men or women, when you start to lose it, you can't continue eating the same food. Like even if you change nothing about your diet, if you've lost five pounds of muscle, cause you're not using it regularly, you're now burning less calories. You can't even get away with eating the same thing that you're eating now. As you age, as you lose muscle, you're going to have to continue eating less and less to maintain your current body weight. And that's one of those problems we see come up a lot. I know we have a lot of uh, women. There's a whole group of street parking members that are like, they call themselves the menno parkers. And I know one of the, the topics that comes up in that group a lot is I feel like I have to eat less and less. Well, one of the best things that you can do as you age is work to at least maintain the strength and the muscle mass that you have because it's going to help you to uh, keep your metabolism where you want it to be for sure. And the hormonal stuff as well, obviously, that Jeb mentioned um, earlier. And I, th I like what Jeb was talking about with the... Um, the strong man or anyone who's like into powerlifting and their whole world is one rep max. That's great. And it's super impressive, but it's not as applicable to like your daily life as what we're talking about here. It's um, their whole life revolves around one rep and they're strong for one rep. But you see a lot of times where that strength doesn't transfer into necessarily like hiking with a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> like that might not work out for you so hot if that if you've only trained strength in one way um yeah yeah because one of a uh, perfect example is that of that i think they took a crossfit athlete made him do grace dirty clean and jerks with a you know a one rep olympic lifter and you know the functional athlete you know ended up crushing the olympic lifter you know for that reason right it's the functional strength that I think is going to be the most effective long term than just being a strong individual that is more of like a power lifter, you know, so. Yeah, I think there's different types of strength, too, for sure. There's the there's like the one rep max type back squat, deadlift, putting a stone up on a little platform or whatever. And that's awesome. And then there's also strength endurance, which is like what Julian's talking about, where you can take a more moderate weight and repeat it over and over. Um, and then there's like body weight strength too, where you take some people who are very strong in some things and they have a tough time doing one or a set of five strict pull-ups, probably because they're so heavy that, you know, they're, they're just big people. But we, when we're talking about getting stronger, we're talking about all of it and having balance across all the different types of strength and, you know, how strong is too strong? Well, too, you're too strong or you're spending too much time worried about this if, you know, all the other different types of strength or maybe your cardio respiratory endurance gets kind of like pushed to the back burner. We want it to be balanced, but um, we definitely want to encourage people to work and build in strength if they're not doing so already. I'm sure the people that are already doing it probably just they didn't even tune in today. It's the people that are on the fence about it. I was going to add one other little thing too on the um, aesthetics piece, just because I know what a lot of people's solution is, is to do more cardio. And what happens a lot of times is if you up your cardio, the way that your body's going to fuel that cardio is by breaking down the muscle, right? And converting that into fuel. So now you're losing muscle and you're not burning fat. So your body fat percentage can actually go up from doing more cardio. So lift some heavy stuff. And now you have less muscle mass. Exactly. When you're sitting at your computer <laughs> to burn calories. Uh, and it's and it's also not movement specific. And uh, so, for example, you look at somebody like a like a marathon runner in the Olympics. They look 
very different than someone who runs the 100 meter sprint in the Olympics. Now those 100 meter sprinters are strong. Like they are powerful, strong and explosive. They're running. And so the marathon runner is also running, but the training is, is different in a way that the intensity is different. And so your body ends up looking uh, differently. And so of course with street parking, it's, we try to hit all of the different variations of all of that kind of stuff, because our goal is just to help you guys live the best possible quality of life and look the way that your body is designed to look when it's at its most healthy. Um, a couple other things that we have listed here, and actually I think this one applies to where we're kind of at right now, but Alex, how does being strong actually help you burn more calories during a workout? Like how does it change the power output during your workout if you're stronger? Well, if let's say I increase my deadlift rep max, which by the way I am working on right now, should should work out well. Um, the more maximum power output or strength output I can I can put out for one rep, generally I'm going to also be able to build up on like multiple reps. So any sub-maximal load, if I increase my max, those sub-maximal loads and my ability to lift them is going to improve as well. So that might look like I go for the extra challenge weight in the daily workout and I'm able to still meet the goal time or I stick with the suggested weight, but I'm able to get through the reps quicker because I have that that strength there. Um, so basically both ways, I'm increasing the intensity, which we talk about a lot uh, a lot about and why we harp on the goals so frequently. Um, but yeah, increasing my strength allows me to increase my intensity which allows me to improve my results, which for most people that means burning more calories in the workout and then continuing to burn calories as my muscles repair long after the workout is done. Nice. Um, a couple things that we haven't hit on yet and we're gonna get into the different ways to gain strength because obviously that's important because I think that there's definitely some misconceptions of what strength training has to look like or things like that. But even let's talk about like prevention of things like diabetes and heart disease. Jeb, can you talk about how strength training, because I think again, people consider cardio to be what you need to do for prevention of some of that stuff, um, or at least helping to prevent it. Can you talk a little bit about how strength training can help out in that area? Yeah, so. Um... As long as it's not taken too far. <laughs> I mean, really, it, it kind of a lot of it comes back to the the hormonal um, component, like, and this is maybe an extreme example, but let's say you're doing heavy back squats, where there's a portion of the squat that you are holding your breath, so that you can stay braced and protect your spine. Well, in that time, your blood pressure is going to spike. And for some people, it might spike a lot, but if you're just being safe with it, it's going to, it's going to spike. That's supposed to happen. Right. And then there's this like recovery phase that happens afterwards where your body comes back to homeostasis. <laughs> right. And so, um, and same with diabetes, right. Um, regulating the amount of sugar that is in your blood. So <clears throat> it's kind of like with the, you were talking about this earlier, and I don't know if you said exact words or whatever, but basically your body is designed to, um, to, it's designed for stress. It's designed to be put under stress. And the beauty of that is that you apply the right amount of stress to your body, and then it recovers and it gets stronger. And we see that with muscle, we see that with bone, and honestly, we see that with um, organs. I for family reasons, went and got my heart looked at recently. And on the um, EKG, they found an abnormality. And the guy was like, it's probably nothing, you're very healthy, um, but there was this one like spike on there that shouldn't have touched this other line. And he's like, let's do an uh, ECG just to be safe. And what they found out, what they did like an MRI basically on my heart, was that uh, one of the chambers had, um, hypertrophy like the muscle of the heart had grown 
pretty big. And so it was like really strongly pumping and causing this spike on the readout. And so it's actually a really good sign rather than a really bad sign. So even your organs can get stronger. And that happens from putting them under the right amount of stress and then giving them the proper recovery after that. I think that's a good lead into another thing that I wanted to mention was something that we hear a lot um, as coaches, whether it's been in street parking or, or elsewhere, is people are afraid to do what they would need to do to get stronger strength train um, because of some sort of injury from their past or some sort of like back pain that they're dealing with probably for many people because they sit all day long and and they're not in the best positions and so people are like oh i'm afraid to lift weights because i have this xyz and one of the things that we want to encourage of course um you want to know exactly what the injury or issue is that you're dealing with and all of that but let's take low back pain because that's a very common one one of the things that has been shown over and over again is that strength training done properly with good technique and not trying to you know one rep max all the time can actually improve those symptoms because let's say you've got like a herniated disc or something like that if you stop moving and stop um doing things to strengthen the muscles around that joint the muscles around the joint are weaker and it actually makes the symptoms worse because you don't have as much muscle supporting that that joint and so the stronger we can maintain our glutes, our hamstrings, our lower back, and all of that stuff, the more uh, support and, yeah, just structural support you're going to have around that joint, and the better your symptoms will be. There's more blood flow to the area, all of that stuff. And so the worst thing that you can do in many cases when it comes to those types of injuries is sit on the couch um, because oftentimes that's just going to lead to it maybe getting worse or at least feeling worse. I know you have experience with that. Well, I was just going to touch on that whole, the heart being a muscle bit, right? It's crazy how it all works full circle because now we live in a lifestyle where, one, America, just people in general are not as active as they should be, right? Yet we're living life with constant stress on a daily basis. And we don't have, our body is just not keeping up with this high stress all the time. So with strength, right, we are now regulating our hormones. Also, you know, we're making our hearts stronger to be able to keep, essentially keep up with all this, um, you know, day-to-day -day stuff. So this is also why it's extremely important to make sure that you are keeping in the best physical shape to be able to keep up with your day-to-day -day quality of life. And who knows what that may be, but it all really does tie into each other, you know, way more than we think. Can you talk about, because I think you're a great example of, you used to lift heavy, like we're talking like one reps, three reps, high volume, high weight training sessions when you were training for the CrossFit Games, and you have a back, it's not an injury necessarily, but basically you're just one of your discs is gone. <laughs> um, but you have found, I mean, you still are engaging in activities that to maintain strength, but your training has changed. So for people who are like, oh, I'm just not gonna do any of it, can you talk about how you've changed your training a little bit from the ones and threes and, and heavy lifting to what you're doing now? I mean, even the stuff with the kettlebells um, to maintain strength and maintain muscle mass without feeling like you need to go heavy all the time. Yeah, one of the things that I was lacking for sure was just um, my core wasn't as strong as it should have been. And I think, it, you know, when I was, lifting heavy all the time it was putting a lot of stress um on my lower back and just technique that also comes with technique as well um, but in general, i was lifting a lot of weight and it just really caught up to me and i got really bummed out because it got to the point where it was like sending you know shocks through my leg where i couldn't stand for more than a couple hours it was getting so bad to the point where I was like stretching so much and then I tended I, then I overstretched and I just was getting so frustrated at this whole situation where then I just kind of toned it back and I was like you know I'm not gonna lift heavy anymore there's no I kind of set number weights as to to follow in my day-to-day -day training and not exceed past that and then all that did was just kind of put me in better shape now 
uh, focusing more on technique, positioning, and then just slowing down a little more to kind of re-strengthen uh, my structure at that point, which kind of got rid of my lower back pain. I was focusing more on really standing up all the way and squeezing the glutes, bracing my midline, because if you don't do that as you're lifting heavy, you're more prone to injury um, as opposed to you know, doing it and just paying attention. Now you're really going to do your body a favor and really strengthen everything that you should by focusing on all the proper positioning, going lighter, doing different um, pieces of equipment like the kettlebells. Um, yeah, just getting back to strengthening up that core for sure. Awesome. Okay, so moving on to like the how, because I think this is um, a big, I don't think it's a question mark. I don't think that people know that it should be a question mark potentially. I think there's this, there's this belief that strength training needs to look like graphs and charts and percentages and all of this and barbells and a full gym full of equipment with bands and chains and like, you know, a lot of stuff. And it can look like that. It definitely does look like that for some people. And, and that type of training can be very effective. Um, but let's talk about what we mean when we talk about getting stronger and the different ways to strength train that literally anyone can do so jeb do you want to you want to pick one to kind of start do you want to talk about the graphs and charts one first and and why maybe people believe that that's the only way to get stronger um sure <laughs> mm -hmm. uh yeah so i i definitely think that like julian was saying and what we've all probably in our coaching education have learned it's like it's from the inside out it's your core and it goes out from there. It's deep in the core and it goes out. Um, that's long and it's boring. And for some of us, we want to see improvement. Um, and I think that's 100% valid. And data is fun. And so I love being able to have numbers and be able to plot them out on a chart and um, have a program. And I've so I've done, you know, like as far as strength training, like starting strength and the, um, Windler 531 and the, um, who is it? The five by five guy, the football guy. Um, I can't remember his name. Um, but yeah. And so it's great. You know, you get either an app or you get your spreadsheet and you plug in the thing and it gives you the percentage and it all comes back to this concept of periodization and progressive overload where you're just slowly ramping up the load and um maybe decreasing the volume while you're increasing the intensity intensity being uh the amount of weight not necessarily time based um so the great management leader peter drucker says you know what gets measured gets managed mm. and i and i and it's true if you have something that you can measure that you have data points that you can look at then it's just easier to manage. And if you are looking at those data points, then it's always kind of in the front of your brain and you're paying attention to it. And like I always say, like if you're paying attention to something, then that's how you're gonna notice the, the positive results of that thing. If you're not paying attention, then who knows? Um, so I think there's a lot of value to tracking your strength um, gains and also just the activity that you're doing. And over time, you can do some feedback analysis on that and you can see where you're at, um, what's working, if you want to keep going, if you want to try something different. Um, but I think if you are going to be tracking stuff and measuring stuff, it's really important that you um, be patient. I think a lot of people, they, they want to squat, let's say, 405 pounds, but they can only squat... 225 pounds and they're like i want to squat 405 because i want to have those four plates on both sides of the bar right well your goal should be to squat 230 pounds and once you can do that maybe it's 232 pounds and then at some point maybe that 405 is going to come but like measure those little things and 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 be patient it takes smaller steps um but to answer your or to address the thing that you wanted me to talk about. <laughs> yes, there is a lot of value and it's fun to be able to see your numbers gradually changing over time and it provides motivation um, and, um, and, and knowledge of, of yourself and what you can do. 
Yeah, and I think there's kind of like two things that I wanted to piggyback off of that a little bit. I personally believe whether it's a weightlifting program or a 5K program or whatever, the real reason that you're seeing improvements is because you're consistent in doing that thing. Um, it's not that this program was like the best program that's ever been invented. It's no, that you're consistently back squatting now where you weren't consistently back squatting before. Your percentages could be completely off, but the fact that you're doing it regularly, you're going to see improvements. So that's like uh, number one, don't overthink which program or what if your percentage is exactly what it needs to be if you're doing a percentage-based program. A lot of the power workouts that we, so we have starting strength, which is like a progressive overload type program that we use in street parking or the 20 rep back squat. But we also have just our, they're not random, but for lack of a better term, random, um, not linear weekly power workouts. And they're not percentage based. We just tell you to go heavy for what feels heavy for you that day. And if you're consistent with those, you're also going to see strength gains unless you're like already a high level athlete who's been lifting for a, consistently for a very long time. So no one needs anything super complicated until they're at that point. The other thing that I will say is kind of with Jeb's like example of the 225 versus 405 is why do you want to back squat 405? Like, is it really like the four plates thing? And it's the same thing that people, when they tell us, I want to lose 20 pounds. And it's like, where did you get that number? Like, what is the 20 pound number? You should be shooting to back squat as much as you need to back squat to live your best life. <laughs> and you should be shooting to be at the body weight that is the body weight that allows you to live your best life. So try not to get too attached to, well, I saw like whatever athlete do this and this, and I want to do it too. That's cool. And it can be motivating, but remember what the ultimate goal is and where the focus can kind of go off the deep end a little bit. Alex, talk about, um, we just introduced actually a body weight strength program and street parking. And sometimes I think people forget that if you right now are unable to do one push up or a set of five really strict push ups on your toes, that you've got a strength program like built in and you don't need any equipment at all. So, talk a little bit more about how you can use your own body weight um, to get stronger and you don't need to even pull out the barbells and the chains. <laughs> yeah, well, I was kind of thinking while Jeb was talking about progressive overload and uh, back to something he mentioned, but that our bodies are made for stress and strength or gains or results all come, all stem from recovery from that stress. And progressive overload provides stress, but it's not the only way that, you know, we would need to do that. So I think body weight shrink slowing down, holding positions, you know, isometric holds, eccentric loading, like without any additional weight is a perfectly great way to put your body into stress that it then needs to recover from. And in that recovery, you gain strength. Have you guys seen like the, um, first of all, like Olympic gymnasts are crazy strong. Or like, have you go look up bar stars? Is that what those those guys are that go to like the parks and do the crazy stuff on the pull up bar? Th that is strong in a much different way than those strong men or power lifters are. But that is an opportunity where it's just how you the control that you have over your body weight and holding it in different positions is a completely different type of strength that is very very applicable to real life and injury prevention and all of that stuff. Um, it's crazy. Like it looks fake when you watch it. It's nuts. So using your own body weight is a great opportunity, especially depending on where you're starting out, um, where maybe you just start there. I've seen people who get stuck in the bottom of like an air squat or a wall ball because they're lacking the strength just to move their own body. So if that's where you're at, or I mean, all of us could improve until we're on the bar stars, we have room to grow as far as like body weight strength goes. So don't feel like it's always got to be um, barbells. The other program that we released uh, recently is the dumbbell strength. And this one goes into time under tension. We have a lot of members of street parking who don't have access to barbells and plates and, and racks and heavy weights and things like that. And we thought, how can we help them to focus on strength? We had Suns Out Guns Out, which I think is a, another great option. We have Butts and Guts, which is another great option because they're more um, focused on uh, hypertrophy or muscle, like focusing on specific body parts and, and muscle. 
Um, but then we added the dumbbell strength, and Jeb created that program. So, Jeb, you want to talk about? Yeah, um, I love this program, obviously. But uh, the, and the reason why is because I think it's this really nice blend of you're getting some resistance training, but you also are slowing down. So like what Alex was saying with the body weight stuff, what I love about that form of putting your body into a state of stress is that you're going slow and you can't escape. And it's almost like you're more aware of it and it conditions you to just be at peace with it much more than like sometimes we get under a heavy load and we just like ah, get out of here right and a lot of times we can do that because it's just a couple of reps but with the body weight or sorry with the dumbbell strength you're performing these reps like maybe it's six to eight uh squats or uh lunges in a minute so it's like 10 seconds for one rep and if you go faster then you're not doing it right so you just have to sit in it so it's it's more time under tension what's happening is that you are recruiting more and more the longer you stay under tension the more muscle fibers join the party and that's what we're talking about at the very beginning with your muscles ability or the fi more fibers that can contract or the ability to produce force is strength so the longer you sit under tension the more of those fibers join in and then the more access you have to your strength in that moment and down the road. Um, so that's really kind of the, the beauty, in my opinion, of the dumbbell strength. And then the other thing is that staying in those movements and moving slowly through them for longer periods of time also forces your core to have to activate and engage a lot so um you know when i was testing out those workouts i was shocked number one at how lightheaded i felt after a lot of those sets um and then number two at how sore my uh my abs and my obliques um those deep muscles kind of all around the spine uh how sore those felt just after um a few sessions so strengthening the core first allows you to access all of the other muscles around your body and then moving slowly um, and getting more and more muscle fibers to fire allows you to access more strength down the road. Jeb, Anna Sierra is on YouTube right now and she said, you are killing me with the dumbbell strength program. But I, we'll take it as a good thing. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a good thing. Thank you. <laughs> it's a really weird feeling to have your heart rate be that high when you're moving so slow. It's like confusing to your brain because <laughs> you're right. Like you're like, I can't go slower. Like that's not going to help. But also like it's it's a really weird um, feeling. Now, I want to make sure that we hit on the fact that just the daily street parking workouts will develop strength for many people. They'll at least maintain strength for the people who already have a good amount. So while we have all of these extra programs and part of the reason that we wanted to do this episode was to encourage you guys to add some of these in, whether it's the 20 rep squat, um, starting strength, the weekly power or only dumbbell strength, body weight strength, suns out, guns out, butts and guts, like all of these different options, right? Um, we want to encourage you guys to try those out if you haven't um, and to find the ones that work for you because there is so much value in them. And I do like that maybe choosing one day per week where you're not just going like full send and and slowing down and challenging yourself in a different way can be very valuable and it can be a, a nice little mental break in a way. But the regular street parking workouts will help develop strength and they will help you to uh, maintain strength and there's a couple of different reasons that's going to happen. Number one, we do use weight in many of those workouts, whether it's your barbell or your sandbag or your dumbbells or Julian lately with his kettlebells. Um, if you have the opportunity to switch that up, there's even more benefit to that because your body has to control the object in a little bit of a different way with each of those um, options. But because the intensity is high and uh, high intensity, again, going back to that like 100 meter sprinter versus marathon runner, where they're going all out 100%. Maybe maybe a better example would be like an 800 or a 400 meter runner, um, where they 
they're training at a level of intensity that requires explosive muscle and strength um, where the endurance athlete, it's more just how repetitive can I move my legs in the same pattern over and over and over? There's a lot of lung and not as much. There's definitely muscular endurance in there, but not as much um, explosive power and strength. So in the workouts where we're doing box jumps and kettlebell swings and power cleans with whatever object you're doing or you're throwing your sandbag, all of that stuff at a high intensity. And again, that's why we give the goal times and scores will help you to develop and maintain and gain muscle mass and strength as well. So don't feel like you have to only be doing these other programs now to do that. Um, the intensity is a huge uh, way to make that happen. I know most of us sitting here, um, unless we're testing some of these new programs, we typically just do the main uh, programming um, and then we'll cycle in some of the, the other stuff here and there because we're, we're busy people. Do we want to see if we have, any, are there any questions? There are. Actually, this one uh, kind of goes to what you were just talking about. You mentioned a bunch of these other programs. Is there a specific SP program that would be the best for adding strength? And also, can you do too much adding all of the programs in? Do you want to answer that, Jules? Um, man, you got to, I mean, Juan, how much time do you have? You know, uh, I would just... I would say the main goal would just be to main, do the main street parking workout first above anything else. If you feel like you want to take a little break and try something else, um, the minute you feel like you're getting burned out of one thing, just move to the next thing. Um, and then, you know, stay consistent with that for a bit. And then if you're feeling like discouraged or like, I can't do, well then move on to the next thing. But again, I think for me personally, the main street parking workouts always keep me consistent and that's why we talk about fitness freedom because then i incorporate different pieces of equipment or sometimes i'll slow it down because you know you take a street parking workout that has deadlifts and uh step ups well okay well my purpose today is not really to focus on the goal time i'm going to focus on quality of movement under the time that's giving in the workout and that to me you can it's an accessory workout slash a little bit of intensity uh, you know and so um just listen to yourself how you're feeling and you can't go wrong just find one that keeps you the most consistent. You can really use actually the main programming to um, determine maybe where you're lacking the most in your strength. So for example, people are gonna be very different. Some people are gonna be like, you know, on yesterday's, or I guess maybe it's today's back squats. They're just like crushing back squats and the wall walks, they're just like, no, I'm gonna fall on my face. Like I'm, I really struggle with body weight type strength. Um, and so maybe the body weight strength program is the best for that person where if somebody else is like a little, you know, monkey going up and down the wall and then they get and they're having to use a pretty light weight, maybe even lighter than the suggested weights on the back squats in order to hit the goal, then maybe for that person doing some of the like 20 rep squats or something would be best for them. For me personally, um, when it, especially when it comes to strength type training, I have to be kind of at least excited to do it. Um, or it's really hard for me to get mentally checked into it. I can like get going in a regular street parking workout. And even if I didn't feel like doing it, it's 10 minutes, 12 minutes, like I'll, I can finish it. But if I'm not feeling like a heavy day, it's really hard for me to be where I need to be to perform that the way that it needs to be performed in order to be successful. And I love switching things up by doing the dumbbell strength program. And then maybe I do 20 rep back squat for a little while. And then maybe I do... The body weight strength program and changing it up, I think, is going to be hugely beneficial for many people to stay like mentally checked into it. All right. We all hear random things, read random things online about strength and fitness. Do we? We do. <laughs> um, so I have two little, is it true? Is it true that muscle weighs more than fat? And is it true that you should slim down first, then bulk up? Uh, Alex, does muscle weigh more than fat? No. <laughs> I mean, the same, so the same volume of muscle and fat, yes, muscle will weigh more than that volume of fat. But five pounds of muscle and five pounds of fat are five pounds. That doesn't change. Um, so by volume, yes, muscle weighs more than fat. So this is like five pounds of muscle is smaller than five pounds of fat. And you, we've all seen those little, I don't know how accurate those little things are. But we've all seen them like at the doctor's office or in like the, <laughs> yeah, those big, like, you know, pieces of fat that they try to use to scare you. And you're like, oh my gosh. Um, 
Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that we tell people not to focus too much on the scale uh, is just because what really matters is what that weight is made up of. And uh, there can be, like, you might have lost two pounds of fat and gained two pounds of muscle, and you're just looking at the number on the scale, and it doesn't often mean as much as you think it means. What was the other one? The other one is, should you slim down first and then bulk up? Jeb, go for it. I guess it depends on your goals would be the diplomatic answer. Let's assume for a minute that your goal is to just get in better shape, get healthier, to look better, and to feel better. If that's the case, then no. Um, if you're trying to you know, do some sort of aesthetic-based thing, I mean, I think the traditional thing is to, to bulk and then cut. Um, but I have heard the argument that, yeah, you should first slim down and then you should bulk up. But like, to me, what that says is like, you're constantly having to make changes to your lifestyle in order to match this plan. And for me personally, I'm busy, right? And, and I want to have fitness so that I can live my life. Um, and so I don't want to have to be worried about changing my lifestyle and changing my diet and changing my workout routine and all these things. So I think if your nutrition is on point and you are consistent with your training, then you don't really need to worry about all of these other cycling and timing type things. Uh, another thing to really touch up on that is you also have to ask yourself, what are you going to lose when that happens? Um, so let's just say your goal is to, if you were like a body weight ninja and you crush, uh, body strength workouts, and then you all of a sudden want to put on 20, 30 pounds of mass. I don't think you're necessarily going to be the body weight ninja that you thought you were, because then you're sacrificing that to put on 20, 30 pounds of muscle because you're now just heavier. I mean, it becomes more difficult to do that. Whereas opposed to, for me, if I were to lose 10 pounds, body weight movements would feel so much better. Um, because I'd be able to move more efficiently, but then my strength, it, you know, uh, my strength may drop because of that uh, sacrifice there. So also ask yourself those questions and know that's also part of the process. So once you can find a place that you can just be happy with and run with it, um, that's where you will be just well-rounded as an individual. Yeah, and I think it depends on how they're going about slimming down too, because as Jeb mentioned earlier, there's a potential that in their effort to slim down if they do it the wrong way that they actually lose muscle in that attempt and now it's going to be harder it's going to be harder for them to continue slimming down and they're at more of a deficit to gain the muscle in the first place so just train hard eat clean and allow it to kind of find that homeostasis where your body's smart it's going to be like okay this is how much muscle i need to perform what miranda's trying to get me to do every day with these crazy workouts and I'm going to, I don't need to carry around all this fat anymore. I'm going to use this as fuel, you know, so your body will figure it out as long as you're not constantly like, I'm on a cut, I'm on a gain, I'm on a cut. I, we're big time not fans of that approach. One more. Um, how can you get yourself to understand that progress is slow when it comes to strength training, but progress is progress? I mean, it's just like anything else. Um, Muscle, whether it's that you're trying to gain muscle that you can visibly see or you're actually trying to um, add weight to your lifts, both of those take a good amount of time. Now, if you're a super duper beginner, and I think this is where people get frustrated, um, we all started out as beginners at one point. And in six weeks, you can add like 50 pounds to your back squat. That is not because you gained the amount of muscle that you think that you gained in that amount of time, it's because your nervous system figured out how to back squat and to fire the uh, the muscles at the or the motor units at the right time and in the right order and all of that stuff. It's a it's a nervous system thing. Um, that's not going to continue at that rate forever because now your body to an extent has figured it out and you'll see much smaller improvements. The more fit you get, the more strong that you get, the slower that progress is. It's no different than when you lose weight. Oftentimes people lose a lot of weight in the beginning and then it slows down a little bit and that's just the nature of, of progress and the more dialed in you have to be. So if you're strength training, 
the more the stronger that you get the more you might be like leaning on percentages and graphs and charts and stuff like that once you get to a certain level where at first you just randomly you know back squat here and there and you're going to see improvements um what's the rush i guess is the question like do you have a competition coming up uh do you have like are you getting together with your high school buddies at like some certain point and you need the 405 by that day to show them that like what what's the rush remember how we started this conversation was um longevity right and and maintaining strength and having as much strength as possible throughout our life the last thing that you want to do is well first of all give up because it's taking too long or second of all push it to the point where you're potentially going to injure yourself because you're in such a big hurry don't be in such a big hurry do it because it's fun i think it goes back to what jeb was saying too but you have to pay attention and then celebrate even the slightest improvements that you that you that you notice i think i like take for granted that i that i can lift five pounds more but if i if i look at that and i really take the time to acknowledge my accomplishment then i think it's going to carry me through and keep me motivated a lot more the last thing on that that i'll say is anyone can get stronger um you we've seen people start lifting in their like 60s 70s i mean my my dad is a great example of this where he feels a lot stronger he is a lot stronger and if you've never done this type of training before or maybe you haven't done it for a very long time there's no like it's too late to start type situation so don't don't be intimidated by that on the flip side if in your younger days you you were at almost your poten your potential for how strong you could get at some point you're going to start to lose it and the goal at that point is just to hold on to it for as long as possible so if you peaked <laughs> like for me i would say my i i peaked in 2015 like that was as strong and i know it that was as strong as i'm ever going to be mostly because i don't have the desire to do what i was doing back then but also i'm almost 39 years old now um my goal now is not to try to get back to that or or to be stronger than that it's i am pretty strong as a human being at a, a female at 39 years old so my goal is just to hold on to it and to be okay with that reality too um just on the last on the progress thing i think that it's really important that you find something that you enjoy about the act that you're performing as well not just focusing on whether or not the number is moving um and i think to you guys as an example when i watch you guys lifting in the gym like miranda's doing the 20 rep back squats like look on her face there is nowhere she would rather be she loves it right and so like there are things that you need to find in the process that you enjoy because otherwise just waiting for these arbitrary numbers that you think are important um you know aren't going to lead to as much satisfaction so i think um you know really take the time to pay attention and 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 appreciate what it is that you're doing awesome all right guys well we're going to close out this week's episode uh that was episode 17. that was awesome so if you feel like this information is useful to a friend or a buddy don't forget to like subscribe and share the video with them We'll check in with you guys soon. Take care.